Hi everybody, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Here to bring you a bonus video. This is video number seven in our series on ancestor veneration. And I just wanted to provide you with some additional information about setting up your ancestor altar. So there are some taboos to take into consideration, and there are some space saving techniques to take into consideration as well. So many of us may not have a lot of space in our homes. And in that case, I've seen some beautiful altars set up inside of cabinets, inside of cupboards, and inside of closets. And there are a couple of things to take into consideration here. If you want to set up your altar in a space like a cabinet or closet, where you have the potential to then close that altar off to prying eyes, that gives you the added benefit of keeping your altar private in case you need to keep your practice private. However, if you have a large closet that has sliding doors, for example, then you can always easily create a space that is accessible to you at any time you want to work at your altar. You can easily slide those doors open, keep them open throughout the day, um, walk up to the altar when you're ready to work at it. You can even keep a folding chair or an extra chair inside that closet that you can pull out when it's time for you to go to the altar. And then should you need to keep it private or should you need to close it off for any reason, you have the ability to do so. Another thing to take into consideration is a closet with built-in shelves that has a removable door. You can remove that door and then make those shelves a prominent part of your home. You can display the altar then and have it exposed. It's easy to access and it's also easy to save space when you set up an altar in this way. Another way to save space in setting up your altar would be to use your wall space. So many people already have a dedicated area of their home that they hang up family pictures. You can simply use this area or an area like it to hang up pictures of your ancestors. If you want to, you can then add a small shelf to that space where you can keep your water and you can keep your candle. You can sit in front of that wall when you need to work with your ancestors and you can make it a prominent and beautiful space in your home by displaying it on the wall in this way. Near your front door is a great place to do this in your foyer, in your sitting room, and so forth. And that brings us to another important point. It's a good idea to keep your ancestor altar in an area of your home which offers them prominence, which offers them the honor and the respect and the importance that they deserve, as well as an area that makes sense for entertaining your family. So think about where you would invite your family guests into your home. Where would you invite your family elders into your home? Where would you invite your most honored guests into your home? Where would you entertain them? Where would you feed them? Where would you offer them drink? Where would you sit and visit with them? These are the kinds of areas you want to consider for your ancestor altars. This could be near your dining room table. This could be in your kitchen. This could be in your sitting room or your living room. Whatever makes the most sense for you. I have my ancestor altar set up in my workspace because it's the area that I'm in most often and because I want my ancestors to be with me most often. So that's the space that makes sense for me. But it's important that you figure out the space that makes sense for you in terms of where you would interact and in terms of when you would want them with you and in terms of where you would entertain or invite people into your home. There are also some taboos that go along with setting up your ancestor altar. So one taboo is your bedroom. And you can think about it this way. You wouldn't invite your family into your bedroom when you're getting dressed. You wouldn't invite your family into your bedroom when you're sleeping. You wouldn't invite your family into your bedroom when you're in bed with your lover or your wife or your partner, right? So you won't have your family 
you won't have them in your bedroom, you won't have your ancestor altar in your bedroom for the same reasons. Now, if you live with roommates or you have very limited space and your bedroom is really the only place you can set up your ancestor altar, then you can do so by partitioning it off. You could keep it behind a closed closet door as we've discussed. You could hang a curtain in front of your closet. You could hang a tapestry. You could get some kind of um, partition in order to place in front of your altar to create that privacy that would be necessary if you set your ancestor altar up inside your bedroom. There's also a photo taboo for your ancestor altars. So if you do choose to use photos of your ancestors on your altar, you want to make sure that they are photos only of deceased people. You shouldn't have anybody living in any of those photos. And then just keep in mind that the space where you set up your ancestor altar, it needs to work for you. It needs to be a part of your daily routine. It needs to be something that's easily accessible. And it's helpful if you put it in an area that really reminds you of your commitment and your relationship with them and that allows you and allows them to feel like they are a part of your everyday life and they are honored as a part of your everyday life. Thanks so much. Stay blessed.